In this video, I'll show you how you can set up a joystick, throttle, and rudder pedals in Sim Racing Studio to control the motion of your platform for flight or space sims that don't have motion support. Much like the steering wheel and pedals joystick motion tutorial, this video will be focused on the same setup process but for a joystick, throttle, and rudder pedals. Once set up in Sim Racing Studio, you'll be able to control your platform depending on the joystick or pedal movements. Before we get started, you'll need to make sure that you have a premium subscription for Sim Racing Studio. You can purchase one in Sim Racing Studio by going to Setup, License, and then clicking on the shopping cart icon next to the premium subscription. You also need to make sure your joystick, throttle, and rudder pedals are all detected and working properly in Windows. I won't be discussing the joystick setup page in detail since it was covered in the steering wheel and pedals joystick motion tutorial. So please review that video for additional information. This video is linked below. All right, let's get started. First, open up Sim Racing Studio and go to Setup and select Joystick. When you're setting the joystick assignments, be sure to have the status set to off. This will disable motion until you've assigned each axis. However, once you assign a joystick axis, you can tick it to on to test the motion. The profile window is where you can select the profiles you've created. You can create a new one, duplicate an existing profile, and delete a profile. I'll be creating a new profile by selecting the plus icon and naming it HOTAS. Next, we'll start assigning an axis to the joystick. Starting with left, which is left roll, click on the gear icon. This will open up a new window, and at the top, you'll select the available joysticks that are detected by Windows. If your joysticks aren't showing up here, you need to troubleshoot it in Windows. Since we'll be setting up the left, which is left roll, select the joystick you want to use. In this case, I'll select my verbal stick. Next, you need to select the mode, and whether it's a dual axis or single axis joystick. This is an important step. A dual axis controller are things like a joystick, a throttle, rudder pedals, basically anything that can have a positive or negative value or just two ways of motion on a single axis. A joystick can move left and right, and also forward and backward. A rudder pedal can move left and right as well. Most throttles can move forward and backwards, and this is different than an accelerator pedal, since throttles can have a positive and a negative value, depending on how it's set up. Whereas an accelerator pedal usually only has a positive value. A single axis controller are controllers that just have one primary direction, like an accelerator pedal or a brake pedal. It just moves in one direction, a single axis. For the purpose of this tutorial, we won't be using any single axis controller. Please see the steering wheel and pedals joystick motion tutorial for more information on a single axis setup. So since we're setting up a joystick, I'll select dual axis. Next, we'll actually assign axis. It is critically important to follow the warning message that says, move axis to max position, hold, and then click confirm. What this means is that when you move the joystick, in the direction you want to be utilized, it also sets the maximum range for that axis. So if you don't hold it in its max position while you click the confirm button, it won't be ca calibrated correctly. So yes, you have to hold the joystick, the throttle, or the rudder pedals at the maximum movement and then click the confirm button at the same time. You also see a type field change when it detects the axis and have an arrow pointed to the direction it detects. This arrow, or greater or lesser than sign, tells you which way it'll set up the axis, so be very sure it's pointed in the direction you desire. It should usually change once you reach the maximum movement in the direction that you're pushing, so since I'm setting up the left axis, I want to make sure it's pointed to the left. The axis field shows the number of axes that are being detected for that controller. So as you see from my peripheral alpha grip, it shows a zero, which is the first primary axis. However, this joystick controller has five axes total. Zero is the x-axis, or basically for roll. One is the y-axis for pitch. Two is the z-axis, or basically for yaw. But it also has another joystick on the controller itself. So up and down on this mini joystick is fourth. Left and right on the mini joystick is the third axis. And it has a fifth axis, which is on the front, basically a brake controller. So it's important to confirm the number of the axis is the correct one for your joystick, throttle, or rudders if they have multiple axes. Now, while holding the joystick to the left, I can click the Confirm button at the same time. 
I can now visually test that it's working by the white bar next to left. As I move the joystick, you can see the bar filling up. And when I move it back to neutral, it goes to empty. Therefore, I know it's working properly. So now I need to do the same thing for the right axis. Just click the icon. I'll select my verbal stick. Make sure it says dual axis. I'll move the joystick to the far right. It shows the arrow pointed to the right. It shows the correct axis, which is zero. And while holding it to the right, I click confirm. Now it's time for a quick test. I do this by going to status, clicking it on. And now the platform will roll to the left and to the right with the joystick axis. If you're using a transducer set or a butt kicker, you might start immediately feeling shaking in the platform. This is actually controlled by the joystick and you can go into here, which is the joystick's tuning page and adjust accordingly. Now with joystick movements, the only ones that will actually function are the engine and suspension. And I'll go over that in just a little bit. But for now, for the remainder of the test, I will turn these down and suspension on off and leave engine on only. I'll click save. and go back and turn off the movement. Next, I'll be setting up front, which is basically front pitch. I'll select the gear icon, select my joystick, the verbal. Make sure it's set to dual axis. Push forward on the joystick. There, I can also confirm that it shows the axis is as one. I will click confirm. I'll do the same for back, which is the back pitch, which will lean platform backwards, select my joystick, select dual axis, pull the joystick all the way back. And while holding it all the way back, I see the arrow is pointing the opposite direction, has axis as one, and I will click confirm. Now to do another test, I will go back up to status, click it to on. And now when I move the joystick, pull it back, the platform pitches backwards, pushing the joystick forward, pitches forward, and I still have the, the roll of left and right. The next ones, rotate left and rotate right, are used for yaw movement. Much like the joystick setup for left and right, we'll follow the same process for the rudder pedals, but you can also use it for a twist on a joystick. So I'll show the joystick first, click on gear, select the joystick. It is a dual axis because there's a left and a right. I will then rotate the joystick to the left, shows the correct axis as axis two. I'll click confirm. I'll then select the next gear for rotate right, select the joystick, rotate to the right, click confirm. And I can see the movement in the blue bar. I'll test this by turning it back on. And now I can see it rotate to the left and right. If it rotates to the opposite direction that you're intending, it'll be an easy fix in tuning, which I'll show later. But since I want to use my rudder pedals for my rotate left and rotate right, what I'll do is actually go in and click on the gear icon. I'll click reset, and this time I will set my rudder pedals. They are a dual axis as well because I have a left and right movement. And as you can see, as I rotate the axis, I need to be careful of not to touch the brakes because that will choose a different axis. So since I'm rotating left, I will hold them to the left. Icon is showing, axis two, Holding them there in place, I click Confirm. I will now do the same thing for the right side. So I reset, I select my rudder pedals, make sure it's dual axis, push forward, shows axis to the opposite direction, axis two, and I click Confirm. I can visually see that they're working before I even turn it on. So now for a test. So moving the rudder pedals, I now have yaw, at the same time, I can test the rest of the joysticks. And as you can see, I get movement on all the axes. Depending on how you use your rudder pedals for left or right yaw, this movement can easily be inverted if set up incorrectly during this process. First, what you'll need to do is turn on the profile. Then you can go to tuning, motion, and where it says yaw in the max telemetry, you can change this and invert it by choosing a negative max telemetry. 
clicking Save. Now when I move the rudder pedals, the platform will move in the opposite direction. If I change this value to back to a positive, Save. You can see now it moves the opposite way. So again, depending on your preference, you can change this to a positive or negative value. And this will work for pretty much any other axis. You can change pitch to be negative, invert it, and roll to a negative and invert it as an easy way. And this will apply to any particular tuning within Sim Racing Studio. Let's go back to Joystick to finish the setup process for Speed RPM. If you don't have a wind kit, or a shaker kit, you can skip this process and just use the joystick for movement. But the speed RPM will also control the winds and shaking of the engine shake effect. So to do this, what I want to do is bind it to my throttle. I'll go to joystick. I'll choose throttle. But much like the verbal joystick, this particular throttle has a lot of different axes. I believe five in total. So what I want to do is make sure I'm not touching any of the other axes, moving the throttle backwards and forward. But for this one, because moving the axis to the max position, I want to hold and click confirm when it's there. So pushing the throttle all the way forward, I will click confirm. Now I can verify the movement and speed RPM. Now to test the speed RPM setting, I'll turn the status to on. And moving the throttle all the way forward, the fans come on full blast. I can adjust the fan settings as well via tuning and wind, via the power range, or even the max curve, depending on how hard and how soon I want them to hit max effect. This is also an important setting for shake. I have this pre-adjusted here, but the only effects that are impacted by the, sh the movement of the joystick through the joystick setup is going to be engine and suspension. So specifically, engine will start to vibrate much like an engine car or airplane engine. The rate will become faster, more intense, the more throttle I give it. Suspension will cause the shakers or any particular transducers that you have in the motion platform to shake appropriate and directly related to the direction of the platform. So if I move the platform to the front left, the front left shakers are shaking. If I rotate it over to the front right, the front right shakers are rotating. Back right from the rotation. Now the back right shakers are shaking and back left. The suspension is primarily utilized for motion pl or platforms that are not motion platforms. So I highly recommend to turn suspension off for immersion. And the only one that you can likely have on if you want to is engine. I turn it down to six. This will give you much more of a consistent shake. Otherwise, if you have it set too high, what can occur is clipping and it'll sound more like a pulse feeling. So between six or seven or eight are good settings. This will be dictated by your own shaker setup, also by your window setting. So also see my shaker tuning section uh, or tutorial rather, which is linked below. Now to continue to motion tuning. So since the platform is already set up, there's a different couple settings that I would highly recommend. One is for pitch. If I adjust the pitch up to 15, I will get a bit more pitch when I move it up and down. The reason why is it's making pitch more predominant in the final position of the platform. The same thing with roll. I'll move pitch or roll to 15. This way I get quite a bit more roll. So you can push these all the way to 20, but it will move the platform to the maximum deflection, which can be a bit jarring. For yaw, I like to turn this down a little bit to have more of a nuanced feel, down to five. You can see the difference in ter terms of total movement as I slam it. If I put this all the way up to 20, you can see how far and how jarring and how fast the motion is. So I highly recommend to leave this down on five. All the other effects are not utilized. So what I like to do is turn these down to zero, just so that they're not factored in or cause any particular errors or issues in telemetry. The only other setting I would highly recommend is up at the top is to change smoothing to 100. What this does 
is it smooths out motions so that if I go to the hard to the left and hard to the right and back and forth, as you can see, it was not nearly as jarring as when I was showing the example earlier. Reaction speed is set to 70 because again, joystick movements can happen really fast. Anything else that's really quick can cause a much more jarring motion. I've also written a detailed joystick tuning guide, which is listed below, so I won't cover all the details in this video. However, I definitely go through that particular joystick tuning guide to figure out more nuances for joystick tuning. With that, everything is set up and ready to use for games. Certain games don't have telemetry output, unfortunately, like Star Wars Squadrons at launch. Hopefully one day they'll add it. But in the meantime, you'll be able to use this particular joystick tuning and functionality within Sim Racing Studios to get motion out of your platform. This type of support will also work for any other game. It doesn't have to be Star Wars Squadrons, but any game that just does not have native motion support. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section and let me know if this helps you out. Thanks.